Hey, it's V from the A-Team, and today on 4 Minute Film School, we are shooting a pool scene, but at night, and it's a horror movie. That's right, let's go. We're here with DP John Salmon. Thank you so much for joining us again. He has worked on a lot of different genres like comedy and Western and sci-fi and horror, which is what we're talking about today. And it is a pool scene, a kind of creature from the deep type situation. I just wanted to create kind of a fun atmospheric pool scene where you kind of, before you ever see the creature come out of the water, maybe you feel this light skipping off of the water that implies that something might emerge from it. And then when you do finally see the creature, you know, how can you light it in an interesting way? So let's talk about the lighting. First of all, it looks like the entire thing is motivated by the pool. The one that's creating the bounce off the talent's face was a 300D skipping into the water, almost like the way you would shoot into a mirror or a bounce card. Although I'd say the first light that I placed was the uh, edge light, which is a 300D right at the edge of frame, kind of backlighting everything. Uh, for the most part, you want to have like a lot of darkness in the frame to allow the, the viewer's imagination to run wild. And then we filled in with that key light. So once we had the two lights up, I realized that it was still feeling a little bit sourcey, like the pool light kind of cut off unnaturally. So we added a third light, a 300D skipping, doing essentially the same thing as a key light, but about 23 feet to the left. Uh, and that was meant to light up the gazebo in the background and create a little sort of a continuation of that light, albeit at a lower stop. I also think that for horror, it's not necessary that all of your lights should actually be maybe motivated by something practical. In this case, all of them were as if it's coming from the pool and you added another tricky little light practically with her phone. It seemed natural to just turn the phone on and download like a white frame from Google so that she could just have like a neutral white kind of returning up at her eye. So when you came in for that close up after your wide shot, you kept the lighting pretty much the same. So often I find when you punch in from a wide shot to a close and you maintain the same lighting, you'll see some of the imperfections that weren't apparent when you were in the wide shot. So in this case, we walked in a big piece of four by opal and we hung it directly in front of the light, which gave it kind of a softer, more forgiving effect. You didn't notice the sources as much. I also like how you match the wide shot to the close up, not only with kind of the framing and the lighting, but also with that foreground element of the bush. Especially when someone's about to be attacked or approached, you want to create a sense of voyeurism. And one of my favorite ways to do that is to have a foreground element that you're kind of looking past, whether it's through a doorway or past, you know, in this case, a bush. And so when we went to the close up, we still scooted that bush back into the frame to create a sense that like maybe something was watching her from afar. So for that reverse shot, her point of view, what she's looking at, it's this person coming out of the water. You lit that in two different ways. How did you light that initially? So initially I had a 300D off to a uh, camera right, hiding just outside a frame, shooting down into the pool, only lighting the background. What I did is I took an aperture uh, MW, and I wrapped it in black wrap to kind of create what you call a snoot, which is like sort of a cone that shapes the light so it goes down a very narrow path. And then I actually had the actor place it underwater for me so I could get the light just right. Once I looked at the image, I realized that I had cast too attractive of a person. <laughs> it didn't seem scary because the guy was just like model posing. So. Instead, we had him turn off the MW and then just kept him entirely as a silhouette with a knife. I will say that also makes it more horror if you don't see who exactly is coming out of the water towards you. Yeah, it kind of activates your imagination. So that is our horror scene by the pool. Let's take a look. So some lessons learned from this particular scene, this horror vibe, how to create that suspense, how to create that tension, what have we learned? So you want to use in most horror predominantly shadow, especially in horror where you want to really activate the audience's imagination, imagine what's in the background. We also use fog to help to obscure some of those background details even more and make the audience wonder what's in the background. And then we use foreground elements in a very kind of Rosemary's Baby sort of way to make you feel like something's watching them from afar. So that brings me to our common question. What is another cinematography technique that you find effective in horror? Let us know, describe it. The best answer is going to win an empty SKB case. So you can put all your equipment and all your lights in there and go out and shoot. If you like this show, please do subscribe and give us a thumbs up. If you liked us, 
our social media handles will be down below. Just drop us a, hey, slide into those DMs. Other than that, I hope you have an amazing day. Bye. Bye.